Hello. Welcome to this week's news and stories. A park in Yorkshire has been infested by caterpillars. So far 15 trees out of the park's 40 have had their leaves and bark stripped. The normally busy park is now empty of people, the levy that will eventually turn into moths are about an inch long and have made large webs of silk all around the park. Although an unpleasant sight the caterpillars are not harmful. Bradford's local pest manager, Dennis Shipway, has said, they are going to let nature run its course. Leaving the caterpillars will give lots of food for local wildlife, whereas pesticides would be harmful to the wildlife that live in the park and children that use it. Moving on to the Queen's royal visit to Ireland. In the past 100 years Ireland has been divided, the South became a full republic and the troubles continued in the North ending cautiously with the Good Friday Agreement of 1988. No sovereign from England has been to Ireland due to the attacks due to the blood spilled by English and Irish through the years. 81% of Irish however, polled that they welcomed the Queen to their country. The trip has been politically and securely organized, however, the Queen's cousin Lord Mountbatten was killed in 1979 by an IRA bomb on a boat along with his 14-year-old grandson and so there are certain areas that she will not be visiting. The visit includes a ceremony in the Dublin's Garden of Remembrance, to that was each at the government buildings, Trinity College, the National War Memorial Gardens and Croke Park Stadium. The two days of formal state visits and reconciliation is ending with the Queen visiting the National Stud at Kildare on the Curra. She was with horse racing folk and was warmly applauded by staff and guests. The Queen currently has 20 horses and reigning some that were reared in Ireland and her horse Carlton House is a favourite for this year's derby. There has obviously been tight security on the royal visit and the message from the Queen's presence is that she has offered her sincere thoughts and deep sympathy to the victims of Ireland and the UK's troubled past. In an international news the head of the International Monetary Fund was arrested in New York at the weekend on suspicion of trying to rape a chambermaid at the hotel where he had been staying. He was denied bail at his first court appearance but will try again in a second court appearance today to get bail. Strauss-Kahn denies the charges. On Wednesday he resigned his post as head of the International Monetary Fund saying he needed to devote all his time to defending his innocence. Gordon Brown has been mentioned as a possible replacement for him. Strauss-Kahn has been tipped as a successor to the current president of France, Sargoski. In France however there is still a lot of support for Strauss-Kahn and already conspiracy theories are starting to circulate. The alleged victim Althan Frieden says she will testify against Strauss-Kahn. He has been placed on suicide watch in prison. In United Kingdom politics Ken Clark the Justice Minister has faced calls to resign following his comments about rape. During a four minute radio interview he said that there were plans to have sentences for criminals who pleaded guilty, including rapists. Clark supposedly said that some rapes were less serious than others. However he later said that all rape is a serious crime and he had used the wrong choice of words. Joshua Rosenberg a legal analyst said that the thought Clark here was trying to explain that some offenses of rape are punished more severely than others. Those who work with victims of rape say there is no sliding scale when it comes to the impact of rape and the violence involved. No doubt Mr. Clark will be reflecting further on his wrong choice of words. News from the world of technology and a 24-year-old Austrian has had a be in his hand fitted. His original hand was electrocuted in an industrial accident. The man opted to have his hand amputated and a bionic replacement fitted. He is already testing out a new hand which is six sensors fitted over the nerves within his lower arm. His current bionic hand only has two. Multiple signals can be read simultaneously, which lets the patient to twist and flex their wrist backwards and forwards which utilizes the same brain signals that would have powered similar movement in the real hand. This pioneering work is being led by Professor Ashman who rejects biological reconstruction in favor of bionics. He says that he acts in the patient's best interests by providing them with the best outcome so he has no issues around amputating their hand. The Olympic torch will start its United Kingdom tour on May the 19th, 2012 in the United Kingdom. The torch will start its journey round the country at Land's End until it arrives at the Olympic Stadium on the 27th of July. 
The journey will take place over three months and has been designed so that the torch will be at least 100 miles from everyone in the United Kingdom at some point along its journey. The tours will consist of 74 destinations and cover some 8,000 miles. Thank you for joining us and be sure to tune in again next week for a roundup of the week's news. Stay classy Western Supermare.